2012 Republican candidate and Trump supporter Herman Cain has tested positive for COVID-19. And he's somebody who was just at that Trump event in Tulsa. So let me show you uh, his tweets here. Also, I'm going to get to the current numbers right now in the U.S. and how it compares to other countries to give you an idea of how the U.S. is faring. But first here, Herman Cain on June 20th tweeted this out saying, here's just a few of the hashtag black voices for Trump at tonight's rally. Having a fantastic time. Hashtag Tulsa rally 2020. So this was the Tulsa rally where there were fears that there were going to be a lot of people contracting the coronavirus because of how many people are indoors without masks in close proximity. Luckily, only 6,000 people showed up when it was expected to be about 20,000 people inside that event. So, I mean, events like this where most people not wearing masks, all sitting close together, these are the worst case scenarios in terms of spreading a, a virus. So, look, it's not clear he got it from this. He, he may not have got the coronavirus from this event, but it's definitely a potential. And his account came out today, July 2nd, saying, uh, we are sorry to announce that Herman Cain has tested positive for COVID-19 and is currently receiving treatment in an Atlanta area hospital. Please keep him and all who are battling this virus in your prayers. And his full statement goes on to say, on Monday, June 29th, Herman Cain was informed that he had tested positive for COVID-19. By Wednesday, July 1st, Mr. Cain had developed symptoms serious enough that he required hospitalization. He spent the past night in the hospital, and as of today, Thursday, July 2nd, he is resting comfortably in an Atlanta area hospital. Mr. Cain did not require a respirator and is now... Uh, and is awake and alert. There is no way of knowing for sure how or where Mr. Kane contracted the, the coronavirus, but we do know he is a fighter who has beaten stage four cancer. So look, clearly i not a Herman Kane supporter <laughs> or even follower or even anything, um, but I hope the man gets better. But the, I mean, the real point here is Jesus Christ, don't, <laughs> don't go to events like this, where there's 6,000 people in close proximity with no masks. Now, his uh, team also put out a statement saying, quote, we honestly have no idea where he contracted it. I realize people will speculate about the Tulsa rally, but Herman did a lot of traveling the past week, including to Arizona, where cases are spiking. I don't think there's any way to, to trace this one to, uh, to the one specific contact that caused him to be infected. We'll never know. Which is kind of scary, because <laughs> if he did get it in Tulsa, that means he could have been unknowingly giving it to a lot more people during his traveling. But as he says, we will never know. Now, I do want to highlight here the current state of the U.S. and this virus. So total cases right now, as of July 2nd, uh, almost 2.7 million. And uh, total deaths, 128,000. So look, it, it can be hard to place these numbers without any context. So let me give you some context. Here you go. Daily new confirmed COVID-19 cases per million people. This is uh, showing the rolling seven-day average. So uh, this, this kind of speaks for itself. Um, you have the U.S. right up here, numbers increasing, the highest numbers uh, over the seven-day average than they've ever had um, compared to, you know, the UK, France, Australia, Canada, doing uh, much better at controlling this. And the main difference here is that the US is run by a far-right extremist. I mean, the UK, the UK has a conservative leader and, you know, not praising him at all <laughs> because he's not a good person. But they have taken this virus, the leadership has, uh, initially, uh, initially they didn't, but They've now taken this virus more seriously and are actually listening to the scientists compared to what Trump has done. I mean, really, if you think about it, all Trump had to do was tell his supporters to wear a mask, encourage them to physically distance, be careful, be aware of your surroundings, stay indoors as much as possible. That's all he really had to do. But he didn't. He didn't take it seriously, almost treated it as as a, a hoax at times, and this is the result. So, and let me show you as well, um, 
Brazil here, because this is another country with a far-right extremist as a leader, Jair Bolsonaro. And you see here, Brazil's numbers also terrible. In fact, the judge in Brazil, or a judge in Brazil, had to um, uh, request that Jair Bolsonaro actually wear a mask in public, because him not wearing the mask in public was having a negative impact on the rest of the country. So you have two far-right leaders here, here who don't care about the people in their country, don't care about this virus, don't care about science, and this is the result of having that kind of leadership. Now, some people are going to try and say, oh, but it's, you know, it's the protests. It's the protests in the U.S. Um, that's why people are getting it, even though if you look at video of those protests, well, first of all, they're outside. So being outside already is a lot safer than being indoors. But they're outside, most people wearing masks. From what I've seen, most people in these protests wearing masks. So they're outside wearing masks. And uh, I've seen a number of uh, stories now saying that there's no scientific connection between the protests and these increases. Because you're seeing a lot of the increases in you know, Florida, in Arizona. These states where the protests aren't as large as they are in other states. Being you know Florida and, and Arizona more red Republican conservative states. So it's really just this approach to science. And of course, the leadership in the in terms of the governor, uh, the governor is in, in, in both these states as well. So look, all, all, all Trump, not all, but part of what Trump had to or should have done was tell his supporters to wear a mask, physically distance, take the virus seriously, and they would have listened. And of course, people that believe in science also would have listened as well. Now, there's also the, I mean, the other aspect of this where the U.S. is a country where most Americans did not get real help. You look at countries like uh, Canada, um, European countries, where they were given actual help, financial help in terms of, you know, uh, guarantee, either guaranteeing uh, their paychecks or giving them a, a, a UBI or a quasi-UBI, like in Canada, there's two grand a month. If you have been impacted by the coronavirus, you can get two grand a month. So people are having that f financial stability, having that aid given to them, then enables those people to, in fact, stay home more because they don't have to feel the need to go out and work and, and make money. If you are being helped by your leadership, then you are you are able to actually stay home and, and listen to the advice of the experts. But in the U.S., a lot of people, even if they believe in the science, they feel like they have to risk their lives because the alternative is they have no money and they can't eat. So they go out, they work, they make money, whatever it is that they have to do. They go and do it, even knowing the risks, because they don't have any real financial help that other countries, other people around the world are receiving from their governments. So that's an important piece of it as well that you can't forget either. But ultimately here, look, this is two far right-wing leaders. I mean, what else is there to say? This is what two right-wing extremists, this is what they offer you.